In today's video, we'll take a look at another very cool legendary armor set and weapon in Baldur's Gate 3. These are completely missable, however, I also want to issue a major spoiler warning for the second half of this video, as acquiring the high-end versions of these will require you to be close or at the end game. So I'll try my best to keep spoilers to the absolute minimum, however, you can always check back later when you progress a bit further in the game. Now, we have a flawed version of the Helldusk set that we get relatively early. However, there's a perfected version of this that comes a bit later. So let me break down both of them because both of them are very, very strong. So for the flawed version, we have the armor, helmet and gloves. The armor provides lesser infernal retribution, which has a chance to set enemies on fire within a 2 meter radius who attack you. You also take one less piercing damage and it also comes with 18 AC, so a solid option for those who have heavy armor proficiency. Then we have the helmet. This is medium armor, so it can be worn by classes with just medium armor proficiency. It comes with a magical durability in which the wielder has a plus two bonus to saving throws against spells and the plus one to constitution saving throws. And finally, we have the gloves, no proficiency requirement, and it brings the lesser infernal touch. So your weapon attacks deal additional fire damage and your unarmed attacks deal extra necrotic damage and can possibly even inflict bleeding. Plus you gain strength saving throw of plus one. So overall, a pretty good set that can be worn on a number of different classes. Even if you don't use it straight up on a paladin, a barbarian or a fighter, you can probably use the gloves, for example, on a monk, since you will be using a lot of unarmed attacks. You can also use the helmet on a character that wants to have a bit of spell resistances because of the magical durability. So lots of ways to make this work on a lot of different builds. Now to acquire this set, as well as a bunch of other interesting items, you have to talk to Daemon the second time you meet him right here at the last light inn in the ruined battlefield. But he will need some infernal iron for each of these set pieces to craft them for you, however you can get a lot of them very early in the game. So the first you can get is right here in the basement in the abandoned house of the blighted village. You'll have to clear out the web that covers the area below, jump inside and there's gonna be a chest on one of these upper deck areas that if you lockpick will give you one of the first infernal irons. The second one is the treasure room behind Ragslin throne in the goblin stronghold nearby. You will probably have to defeat this boss to get the key, but the infernal item will be with the remaining pile of loot. There's also a third one in the Zentarian basement hideout, which is one of the ways to reach the Underdark via the blocked elevator. If you ever went there, you have to defeat a bunch of enemies, grab their key, and you will find another infernal iron in one of these two chests in one of the cellars. However, there are plenty more, even in Grim Forge, there are a number that you can find, even by talking to the vendor over there, if you succeed all its dialogue options, they will also reward you one of these. But once you're done, you can just bring these to Daemon, and he'll give you one flawed Helldusk item piece for each of the Infernal Iron that you give them, including helmet, chest, and gloves. Possibly feet too, though I only had three available at the time, so I'm not entirely sure. Now, the next set of items are the perfected Hell Dusk versions, plus this really awesome legendary Warhammer. I will talk about the spoiler stuff a bit later. For now, I will focus on how these function and how they look. So this is the Orphic Warhammer, a versatile weapon, so this can both be one or dual wielded. It has a really good damage roll as well as a really nice extra fire damage, higher than the sword from the starting boss. Plus it comes with weapon enchantment plus 3, so your weapons receive plus 3 bonus to attack rolls as well as plus 3 extra damage. It also brings spell resistance, you have an advantage on saving throws against spells, and this setup is actually going to hard counter spell casters, as you can pretty much get a ton of resistances, a ton of saving throws and other ways to mitigate or even prevent spell attacks from enemies as you will soon come to find. Plus, it brings the Unshackling Strike, a pretty interesting removal of any restraint, paralysis or stun effect that are applied to others. You can simply break them free out of those with this strike. Now, let's also go over the armor. This is, of course, a legendary piece and its biggest advantage is the fact that this is going to consider anybody to be proficient with it, despite the fact that this is a heavy armor set. 
So any class, any race, no matter what build they have, will be able to wear this armor, which is absolutely incredible. Infernal Retribution is one of its bonuses. When you succeed a saving throw, the caster receives burning for three turns. So let's say the enemy tries to paralysis you and you resist that, they will get that burning effect for three turns. Also, Prime Ages of Fire, you have resistance to fire damage and also cannot be burned. And you also take three less damage from all sources. So this is possibly the best version of a fire resistance we can get, though it might be a bit wasted if you put it on a tiefling, it might work better on something else. Plus, we have a level 3 fly transmutation skill that we can use. However, if you already have the fly from like the tadpole powers, the illithid powers, you might not use this as much. Helmet is the next one. This comes with the infernal sight. You can see in magical and ordinary darkness up to 12 meters and you cannot be blinded. So this works even if somebody places darkness around you, as in the skill effect or the spell effect. If somebody uses Arms of Hadar, you can actually see through these as well as through just natural darkness, and you cannot be blinded at all. Also, the plus 2 magical durability makes us have plus 2 bonus to saving throws against spells. Attacks can't land critical hits on us, and we also have the Immolation Gaze, an active which sears and frightens the target, even deals extra damage if the enemy is already burning and even causes them to flee. The third piece is the glove. This brings the infernal acuity. It gives a plus one bonus to spell attack rolls and spell save DC. Also infernal touch, your weapon attacks deal additional fire damage or necrotic when unarmed plus the bleeding. Basically, it's the upgraded version of the imperfect one. And finally, it also has the Rays of Fire. It's very similar to the Scorching Ray actually, but it only lets you send three rays, so it's probably on the scale of the level 1 variant. And finally, we have the Boots. The Steadfast buff is one of them. You cannot be forcibly moved by a post spell or action, and you ignore the difficult terrain debuff. Very strong one right here for melee hitters and frontliners. Infernal Evasion helps us if we fail a saving throw, we can actually use our reaction to succeed instead. And finally, the Hellcrawler, a very nice upgrade to the Mystic Step Teleportation, which instead also leaves a blast of fire damage, as well as a pentagram basically at the point of destination. So the entire set right here looks very hellish, very devilish actually. And it doesn't just fit a melee frontliner, like I was tempted to put this on my paladin, but I think it just fits a spellcaster a lot better. Maybe a wizard, maybe somebody who's squishy, maybe even a sorcerer. Since you can ensure you have a ton of AC, since you don't have to worry about proficiency from the legendary set, and then you have all these other counter spells and ways to deal additional damage if somebody casts spells on you. But with that out of the way, let's talk about how you can get this legendary version. And again, big spoiler warning ahead, proceed at your own caution. But if you're still here, then the entire set plus the legendary weapon you get once you reach in Baldur's Gate, and especially the lower city section where you will want to follow the quest line involving Raphael's House of Hope. Your first dialogue with him cannot be missed as he presents himself once you reach the Underdark the first time, but you can also meet him a second time in the Sheres Caress right here in Baldur's Gate. However, if you also miss him here, you can just proceed and all cases will proceed to the next bit, which is towards Devil's Fee down in the lower city, just across of the Elf Song Tower. So you will know you're in the right track if Hellsick, the NPC vendor here, has an extra third dialogue at the top besides the one that says leave or let me see your offers. From here, just persuade her or bribe her if you can until you get the can you help me break into the house of hope dialogue. Don't pay more than 1 to 200 gold otherwise you're just wasting money. But if those dialogues are successful, she'll give you a pouch with a bunch of items that you can then use in the locked room upstairs to summon the portal right here by the pentagram to the House of Hope. Simply follow the instruction written on the piece of paper provided to you. You will know if you placed items in the correct order if they have a small fire effect when you place them. And once all of them are put down, you're going to have the portal opening up towards the new destination. Now here, I will not want to spoil much and I'm just going to give you a bunch of tips to help you orientate yourself. Your objective is to get inside the archive where you will find a bunch of very strong purple items as well as that legendary Orphic Warhammer. However, you need to break the barrier protecting the Warhammer first 
plus you also don't want to alert everybody just yet so instead talk to the archive guy there and try to convince him to give you a special invitation to a room nearby you will need this to enter this room blocked by a barrier that you likely saw on your way towards the archive again will not spoil what happens inside but one way or another you might want to maybe grab a certain key that opens a certain secret safe in that room that in turn will provide you a way to steal the legendary warhammer also this is where you can also grab the hell dusk gloves as part of the set so make sure you don't miss them and loot everything and everybody on your way out of this interesting room you will spot a strange gem on the wall in front of you this will provide you a wisdom and an arcana check that if you successfully pass you can grab a second hell dusk helmet from the set plus a 666 gold from this point on simply go to the archive grab the sweet legendary hammer and also don't forget these other two epic items you can find on each side so this includes this really awesome amulet of the greater health which gives you a constitution directly to 23 and also provides advantage on constitution saving throws so amazing option to have on a paladin also you can get the gauntlets from the other side the gauntlets of the hail giant strength which does the same but for the strength which you get 23 plus a one two strength saving throws now from here on this might or might not lead you in a lot of trouble if you steal these items and i mean a lot of trouble so my suggestion open any of these chests or containers you might find scattered around and try to get the potions of angelic slumber from inside this will provide the same benefit as a long rest since you won't be able to go to your camp for the entire duration of your visit in this place but once it's done just loot everything and make sure you also grab the legendary hell dusk armor and don't leave it aside it's going to be here trust me now for the hell dusk boots these are actually inside of a container on the top floor of the worm rock fortress so you actually need to go back to the main city you will find the chest containing this next to a bed at the top floor of that um fortress basically towards the upper west side wall of it and you will need to grab that if for some reason you break the chest just keep in mind that the item will be on the floor however it's going to be very hard to notice it that's what happened to me but i was able to retrieve it sometimes later and that is pretty much it with how you get these items now probably there's another way to acquire them without being so involved with this quest but again you might be missing on a ton of other loot if you don't so totally check it out and let me know down below if you found any other cool legendaries that are really strong and build defining in the meantime you can of course check out some of the other items that i covered before including legendary quality or just go over some of the biggest mistakes that i wished i knew sooner and maybe they can help you out and avoid many of the headaches that this game can bring thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video